Hello guys, uh, my name is Andrei, I'm a private tutor and uh, I will make a webcast to help you with your math course. So um, in this video let's go through the first workshop, let's go through the first question, question 2.5.2. So let's write it down. Basically we're gonna work with, um, with functions, with linear functions. Question 2.5.2. So, what we got there in part A is that we have a line that passes through the points of two and four. Always the the first the first uh, the first number stays for the x coordinate and the second number stays for our y coordinate. So, based on that, let's write down the line that uh, that belongs to this function. Now, before going any further. Let's just um, have a look of what a function is, what a line is, and what does it show, what does it show on a graph. So if we draw it, if we draw it like that, y and x, y and x, this is our origin. And let's say we have a line, which is a function. Let's say it's something like that. Basically, how does this um, work in business? Why is this useful? Well. A function literally shows how something depends on something else. So a function is usually called like that. y equals to m times x plus c, where c stays for the constant or the intercept. Now we'll show it on a graph what that means. This is the constant. And the constant on the graph is over here. And literally, if you, if you look at the math behind it, it makes sense because what is a constant? The constant is the value of our y when x is 0. So if we do the math and write y equals to m times x is 0, so 0 plus c, well the result will be just c, which is exactly true. This is the value of y, which is c when x equals to 0. So suppose, suppose a, a business case. What is the value of the profits when we have no sales? Well that's just the fixed investment. Whatever we invest in the business, is going to be the level of our profits, which, well, would be negative because we pay a cost, but without having any revenues yet. And the level of the profits would be increasing with the sales, where sales is our x variable, or our independent variable, as we say. Now, uh, what is the slope? What is the slope? Because m, m usually stays for the slope. That's how we, that's how we know it, so that's m, slope. Well, a slope literally shows us a rate of change. Now, why is this rate of change useful? Again, that's for decisions. That's for decision making. Suppose we are, um, you know, a shop of ice creams. So we produce ice creams and we want to know if it's worth buying more chocolate to produce ice creams. So if our ice cream is made of chocolate and milk, let's say. So we produce ice cream and that's made of chocolate and milk. And let's suppose our x is our chocolate. So is it worth to buy, let's say, one more kilogram of chocolate to produce more ice cream? Where well, it would be worth if it increases our profit. So our linear function would show if increasing our chocolate, um, chocolate uh, investment or chocolate input, so if x increases by one unit, by one kilo, how does our ice cream production change? Is it going up or is it going down? Because if it's going up and we actually make more money by investing in more chocolate, let's do it. But if it doesn't, then let's not do it. Obviously, we don't want to lose money. So the slope is always useful for the decision making. Now, the slope, the rate of change, what is it actually? Well, that's literally, as we said, how does the result change? The result is always the y value. How does the result change when our x changes? So our slope is change in the result, change in y, relative or divided by the change in the input, change in x. So the change in y relative to the change in x. Hope this makes sense. Let's use this formula, let's use all this theory to solve these uh, three questions, a, b, and c. So in part a, we just said that we have the point two and four. Let's plug it into our into our line. So y would be equal to 4 and x would be equal to 2. Which means that, let's change calls real quick. 
4 equals to the slope m times 2 plus c. Okay, so we got that. Now, it's also given in the question that our slope equals to 1. So, m equals to 1, which means that the function would be 4 equals to 1 times 2 plus c, which is equal to 2 plus c. So, what can we find out from here? We can find out our intercept, our constant. If 4 equals to 2 plus c, well, that means that c is equal to 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. So, we know the constant, which means that we can actually write our equation, our general line. Well, with the slope of 1, the general line will be the following. y equals to 1 times x plus our constant, plus 2, which is equal to x plus 2. Now, why do we have an, a, a general line? Like, why would we do that? Well, because x is going to take different values. For different values of, let's say, our chocolate, we will have different values of the ice cream. So that's why we always need to know a general line, not just a specific line. The specific line, we use it only when we want to know the result for a specific number. Okay, now let's go to question B and, uh, and, and solve it. So question B, let's write it over here. Okay, we have there two points. We say that our, sorry, we say that, uh, we say that our line passes through two points, two and four and then also 8 and 16. Okay, let's let's actually draw this. Let's actually draw this because if we draw it, it's going to be so much better. Um, change colors, x, y axis. So we got over here y, we got over here x, that's our origin. And we know that when x equals to 2, y equals to 4. So x is 2, y would be 4. And when x equals to 8, let's say over here, y would be equal to 16, somewhere over there. So this is one point, and this is another point, 8 and 16. Now the line passes through these points, so let's draw the line through these points. Uh, okay, let's draw the line through these points. Let's say it's like that. Okay, and the question is, what's the slope? What's the rate of change? What's the rate of change? Well, the rate of change, remember, is the change in y relative to the change in x. So, literally, how did or how much did our y value change when x went from two to eight? That's our change in x, and this is our change in y. This is our change in y. So, the slope in this case, the slope is change in y relative to the change in x, which would be equal to 16 minus 4 divided by 8 minus 2, 8 minus 2, which is equal to 12 over 6 and equal to 2. The rate of change across this line equals to 2, which literally means that when x, when x increases by one unit, by one unit, our y value increases by two units. And that's what the slope shows. All right, another last one, part C. Let's go to part C. Okay, part C. So what do we have there? We have the following line, y equals to m times x plus four, because they say that our constant value is four. And this line passes through the point of 8 and 0, which means that when x is 8, y is equal to 0. Well, let's put all this data into our line. y is 0, okay. m, we don't know m. x is 4, so, sorry, x is 8, so m times 8, plus the constant of 4, plus 4. All right. Now, what do we do next? Well, we can find out our m value. We can find out our slope which means that 0 minus 4 equals to 8 times m, okay, which means that minus 4 equals to 8m, minus 4 equals to 8m, and if we do the math, m would be equal to minus 4 over 8, which is the same as minus 1 over 2. So that's our slope of the function, 
we got that. And now we can write the general formula. The general formula for the line. And that would be equal to y. That would be equal to y equals to the slope minus 1 over 2 times x plus our constant, which is 4, given in the question. And that's it. That's the final answer, and that's it for this video.